Shall yeah. we? Okay. Okay. Welcome to Living in Racine. <laughs> you don't have to say that every week. Well, so they know where we are. We 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 haven't moved. We've told them that the channel is called Living in Racine. They know where yeah, they are. Yeah. But <laughs> we can still welcome them. To oh, it. whatever. Anyway, welcome back, guys. Uh, last week we were talking about bathtubs and showers, and this week totally flipping the script, and we're now talking about architecture. And yeah. talking about some of the really cool things about Edwardian architecture. I don't think a lot of people even know what Edwardian architecture is. But join us after the break and we'll let you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, here we go. So what is Edwardian architecture? Well, really, I should be asking you that question, Russ, because Edwardian architecture is based on England. King Edward. Yeah, King Edward. So the reign of King Edward was only a short period in time. It was only nine years in actual fact. It was 1901 to 1910, although they did carry on building them after that. Yes, but we also should note that he was the successor to Queen Victoria, and while he wasn't officially coronated until 1901, he was actually the acting monarch for a few years before that. Yeah. Like most of the monarchies, they don't actually do the full-on coronation for a couple of years usually. So, but Edwardian architect, so he was well, who followed Victoria, and a lot of people mistake Victorian with Edwardian architecture. Yeah. They don't realize that there are some big differences. There are. Yeah. There are some big differences. Yeah. So one of the differences, one of the things that is not different, though, are things about, like, the roof. Okay, the roofs are kind of similar. They're very steeply pitched. Um, They are... Uh, well, in England, they're they're usually tiled. They're made out of terracotta. Over here, of yeah. course, we use asphalt terracotta shingles. Terracotta or slate tiles. Yes, yeah. and that's pretty common in England. But over here in the States, we usually use still asphalt shingles um, mm-hmm. for them. But there are some homes that use terracotta tiles even here in the States if they want to be strictly, like, architecturally yeah, yeah. in line with Ar- Edwardian. Uh, but not so much in the Racine area. Over here in Racine, the Edwardian homes here, they're all like asphalt shingles. Yeah, terracotta shingles. tends to crack in the, in the freezing cold. cold. Yeah. So uh, that's the reason why you don't really see them in Wisconsin Correct. so much. Right, because that wouldn't be good for our yeah. weather. But they are still very asymmetrical, and they have pointy bits. I thought that was funny. You thought that was funny when, yeah. we, said, when we read that. <laughs> they have pointy bits. Well, yeah, that's kind of a roof has. But what they mean by that is that actually... They are much more pointed. They have high pitched dormers they, and things like that. Yeah. Well, they're, they have a higher, they have a much steeper pitch to their roof. Yeah. So when you get to the top of their roof, it looks very pointy. At it the almost top. looks the same symmetrical as a spire on yes. a church. Yes, it's very churchy. Uh, Edwardian yeah. homes are more churchy than Victorian. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that is different, though, um, let's talk about one of the differences, which is the windows. So the windows yeah. in Victorian and Edwardian homes are vastly different. Yeah, so you get a lot of bay windows in Correct. Edwardian yep. uh, houses. Not always to the front, though. Sometimes it They're can on the be side. to the rear or the side. Yep, but you will almost always, you should always have a bay window in the house. Yeah. And sometimes there are multiples. Sometimes mm-hmm. there's one on the front, sometimes there's one on the side, and sometimes there's one on the back. So yeah. bay windows are super common. Patio doors. This is the first time that we saw patio doors enter architecture. Yeah. Because up until that point, people weren't really doing, like they weren't trying to invite the outside in. And in the early 1900s, there was a lot less industrialization and a lot more, I mean, it was still very industrial, but they were moving towards um, the ideas of, you know, enjoying the outdoors, enjoying yeah. your yard. And, and when we say patio doors, we don't mean the sliding ones. No, not they sliding patio like doors. more like the French doors, which would have two doors that would open so a wider Correct. entrance to right. the outside. Right. But it is about the first time that we see that consistently in architecture yeah. is mm-hmm. in the Edwardian homes. We didn't really see them in... Um, in Victorian homes, no. not gen- at least not for the average person. Now, you might find a, what we call a stately home, 
um, a stately Victorian home, so one of the really big mansion type by the owned by the gentry and whatever, they might have had patio doors. But really, lawn parties were extremely popular in Victorian times, and they became even more popular in the early 1900s, pre-war. Yeah. And so these patio doors would often be um, an inside. It, would be, it was kind of our first foray into indoor-outdoor living. Yeah. Which, of course, has become very popular in the last century. Yeah. Playing croquet on the lawn and exactly. things like that. Exactly. Very Edwardian. As we do. Tea parties. <laughs> yes, yeah, so tea parties. In are going the garden. To, should, I, should I try and make your <laughs> English accent and sound a, dif, just absolutely despicable? Just remember the pinky. Yes. Do, do you know, take your tea with your pinky up. Oh, yeah. But they did have a lot of patio doors. They did have sash windows, but Edwardians were one of the first places that we saw casement windows yeah so that was when the change which is came standard about to which, show casement windows which is standard now in most uh british homes yeah, yeah it's kind of funny because in the states we still do a lot of sash windows like double hungs or sash yeah, and things like the that the advantage of having the uh sash window uh, over the casement window is if you don't have central window air window acs yes if you don't have central air yeah sash windows you are can't the... really put them in in a casement window right and so when in modern build and in england there are very few homes that have central air yeah and so the casement windows ironically are not so great in england in that respect no. for the average person mm -hmm. but edwardian homes are the first time that we started seeing those casement windows and those yeah. basically if you don't know what a casement window is it's where the window is hung with two hinges on the side um you have like a, a crank usually and it like swings it open or so, you just have a lever and you push it correct open. in edwardian and homes a lever that you actually hook on to correct. the framework to stop it Flapping about, open. right. Yeah. And in Edwardian homes, you will see the original windows anyway, if they still have them, yeah. would be something more manual. It would not be yeah. as nice as a crank yeah, mechanism. Yeah, the cranks on the older No, no. Style. It would be just a side swing window is what yeah. a casement. But it would have a way to secure it. So like you said, oh, so yeah. it wouldn't flash. So it. the handle you would pull down, that would lock it in the middle. Yes. And the bar that you would hook over... You, that actually locks it right in from place swinging as well. open further yeah. or okay. from slamming shut and breaking the actual glass. And it also secures it as it's closed. Yeah, so. exactly. So patio doors, casement windows, and um, and bay windows are really different from Victorian homes into Edwardian. Yeah. So even though Edwardian architecture really only spanned about fifteen years. I mean, you can still get an Edwardian architecture home now if you want to yeah, yeah. do a new construction. But really, the, the general construction was only for about 15, maybe 20 years, just before the craftsman yeah. period. And um, yeah, and those were some of the things. Now, the other thing that's kind of interesting is that they have patios and porches, but not like a great big front porch like you would see on a Victorian. Mm -hmm. It was actually more of a small little, almost like just an entranceway patio. Yeah, or on the side, it might be a corner of the yes property that would have. A, and it was a porch more area. about it was more about a little porch that you could stand on when you were knocking on the front door to keep dry. Because yeah. let's be frank, keep England, out of the weather. England's got a lot of rain. Yeah. So therefore, those little porches were really nice for that. Mm -hmm. Now, some of those though, what made them a little different was that they would have. So in England, primarily they're built with brick, and we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, but they're primarily built with brick, but the porches and the railings were usually like a carved wood. Yes, that was were, inputted was, in there, and so quite artistic the way that they was were. Done, you they know. were yeah. not as frilly as a Victorian. Yeah, but more like natural curves. Uh -huh. There was definitely a swing towards from the unnatural more towards the natural. We see that in Edwardian homes yeah. in general, and we'll talk about some other elements of that. But the uh -huh. the carved curved um, wood porch framing. Very natural yeah, looking and quite beautiful like archways and that exactly exactly very nice yeah um so they had chimneys because they still primarily were coal and they, this is where they had coal fires in the homes they did which even here in the states the smog of London or yep. the, but even know. here in the states and I'm I've, I've actually sold a home that had coal fireplaces still in it yeah and is an Edwardian home in the downtown Racine area. Yeah. So one of my first listings, actually, um, in the first couple of years was this house on Lake Avenue. Yeah. And it had an old... We did many open houses We there. did, because that was back when houses weren't selling yeah. so quickly. And we did a lot of open houses there. But 
it had a very when I first saw it, I didn't even know what it was. I thought it was just a weird fireplace. And then I did a bit of research because I was listing the property and I needed to know. So I learned that's what I do, guys. If I don't know something and I'm listing a property, I go and learn it before we get it listed so that yeah. I do know. So when I am speaking to people, I'm speaking from knowledge and discovered and learned more about coal fireplaces. Yeah, they're not quite the same as wood burning. Fireplaces. Not in the least bit the same as wood burning. In fact, yeah. you cannot burn wood in a coal fireplace yeah um it's more like a stove that's been inserted into mm -hmm. the wall um than anything else yeah and the chimneys are totally different lining they're more like smokestacks that go up and they're not like a lined chimney so to speak no. um so but the, they do most of them have chimneys and and or fireplaces in the bedrooms in the main rooms there's multiple fireplaces in a true edwardian yeah you generally get at least one on each floor the other thing about edwardians that were really cool about them is that these coal fireplaces were oftentimes flanked by decorative tiles oh yeah and their and their hearths are like usually like a solid piece of granite or something like that. Yeah. yeah, no, actually in the in the U.S. here, they're mostly granite, which was kind mm -hmm. of interesting. But the decorative tiles that flank either side or go over the top, very indicative of an Edwardian, not so yeah. much Victorian. In the U.K., they use more slate for the halves. Yes. Um, because it's readily available. We can yes. get, we you have, have tons slate of it. mines in, yeah. in Wales and places like that. Yep. Uh, where they get it from, whereas over here, granites. Granite was more available. granite was more plentiful yeah. than slate in the mm -hmm. U.S. Yep, exactly. Um, of course, we talked a little bit on the windows. We talked about the fact they have dormer windows as well. Yes. And the dormer windows was because it was actually loft space or attic space, and they thought this is silly. Why should this be attic space? Let's make it bedrooms. And so yeah. that's one of the reasons you get some of these interesting roof lines and these pointy bits, as we were saying mm -hmm. before. Because they threw in dormer windows as well. Well, also in the olden days, in the Edward Edwardian period, a lot of these bigger houses had servants. Very true, and the and servants they lived would upstairs, live up in on the third floor the or the second yeah. floor. Yeah, and they would, they would, and they wanted them to be a little nicer. They were actually nicer yeah. to their servants. Uh -huh. So, um, you hear about upstairs maids and yeah. downstairs kitchen staff. So. But yeah, so the 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 maids or the if you had one or two servants live in, they would be on the third floor or up in uh -huh. that lofty space, and they gave them some windows and stuff. Um, so the other thing that makes them more Edwardian is, um, and speaking of windows, because we didn't touch on this when we were talking about the windows earlier, but is the stained glass. Oh yeah, they were not those Victorian piano at all. Piano windows, yes, with stained glass or on the door panels, yes, because it lets in such beautiful light in mm -hmm. the sunshine. It's almost like it was a pre craft a pre Art Deco because Art Deco went really full blown, you know, Tiffany yeah. glass and you know into the full blown stuff. But you know, like Tiffany lamps and stuff came out about the same time as Edward. Like that was when yeah. the Edwardian lamps were. And we're, I'll talk about that in a minute when it talks about some of the interior stuff. Yeah. Um, because, but that stained glass was definitely something that was Edwardian. And a lot of people think it's just Art Deco and Craftsman, but it's not. And no, it's it actually off with the Edwardian, Edwardian period. And, and what's interesting is that we have a lot of Craftsman homes that also incorporated the stained glass, mm -hmm. almost like an homage. Like they really, people liked the stained glass, yeah. but they were building a craftsman, more modern home, but they still kept the stained glass from the Edwardian period. Yeah. So, and front doors oftentimes had the, not often, but most every time had a stained glass. Had a stained glass yeah. window. Yeah, it was stained it. glass yeah. for, the, for the front doors as well. Gives the privacy, but also it's really nice, um, you know, having a stained glass window. Yeah, it was just more about the beauty of the stained glass. Yeah. And one article I read um, said something about sometimes they had a lot of Masonic signal symbols. So I wondered if it was almost like, um, like maybe it was like almost like a secret code that you knew it was a Mason <laughs> living in that house if they had the Masonic symbols on their stained glass. Uh, maybe. Or maybe it was just a popular symbolism that they liked yeah. to use. It didn't really say why, but it said a lot of them were Masonic symbols ah. into the stained glass. So it wasn't like it was just beautiful flowers. It was actually more geometry. And then we have a lot of Masonic symbols on your dollar bills. That's here. true. On a lot of things. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So we've got the stained glass and you've got the piano windows. If you don't know what a piano window is, it, they are the windows that are higher up on the wall and yeah. they don't open. And the reason they're called piano windows is because traditionally that's where the piano would go on the wall in a house it'd be on that wall 
and the window would be up above it. So why would you have a window come down further and be behind a piano? Mm -hmm. That would be crazy. So you just put these windows up higher and that's what the stained glass yeah. ones were in Edwardians. So let's talk a little bit. We've kind of talked about the outside. Well, actually, let's talk about two more elements of the outside, which is brickwork versus timber frame and then colors. Yeah. So most of them in the UK, well, pretty much all of them in the UK. Correct. Edwardian buildings are brick built exteriors. And usually red brick. Yeah. Because that's most common. Uh huh. More common is the red brick, whereas over here. Um, you'd have a mixture of or no brick wood at all or brick and if like in this area we've got cream city brick so we have some in this area that are actually cream city brick yeah a lot of there's quite a few edwardian homes that in fact i we have a listing coming up in another week or two here i was actually wondering it actually feels like an edwardian home yeah i think it might be an edwardian home that we're about to put on the so market you have to watch out for that one when it goes yeah. live have to go to our Facebook page and our Google stuff because yeah. we don't do this on that on this channel because yeah. this isn't about real estate. But I mean, it's somewhat about real estate, but it's not like not real for estate. Our listings, it's anyway. not for our listings type real estate. Yeah. Um, but that Edwardian home is Cream City Brick. Yes, it is, and yeah. it's got some of the cool like the and you'll see you've got some of the cool like arches with the cornices mm -hmm. on the outside and you see that on the inside as well you see yeah. the cornices and and things like that so um and so we do have timber frame ones here edwardian homes that are timber frame yeah. and we have some that are a combination of brick and timber yeah because uh lumber was more readily available it still is over yeah here, over here brick. yeah in the so, UK, lumber is actually harder to get by than brick well, yeah because of all our naval wars that we had we used up all our oak building <laughs> You used boats. up all your trees building boats to conquer the world in the eighteen hundreds. <laughs> and come to the Edwardian period of the early nineteen hundreds, you were no you had no trees left. Apart so from Sherwood Forest and yeah, a yeah. few others. Yeah, they're, they're pretty much gone. They're they're protected forests. You can't take <laughs> yeah. that wood. So uh -huh. there's like no there's no wood left in England, so therefore yeah. most of their stuff is built with brick. Um, but over here, an Edwardian home could just as easily be completely timber framed, no brick at all. But I will say the two that I've had experience, well, more than two, but the two that I've listed, um, both are Cream City Brick. Yeah. So I thought that was really interesting that over here you're going to find in Racine anyway, for our Living in Racine channel, uh, you're going to find yep. Cream City Brick is what Edwardian homes were made out of. Oh, the other thing I forgot, to, totally forgot. To, well, we'll talk about that in the interior here. Okay, so let's talk about the colors of the outside, which also changed a lot from Victorian to Edwardian. Yeah, it did. So, so if the exterior colors are timber framed, yep. then they are not like the victorians where they had the pinks and the oranges and the yellows and the bright blues and things no nope, no nope, nope. they're not jamaican homes anymore because that's what victorians victorians so. did a lot of white and then it was like jamaican colors it was yeah, crazy yeah. but it was more natural it yeah. was like deeper blues deeper greens grays you still had white. You had white. You yeah. still had white from the timber frame ones. But if they were painted, and obviously not the brick ones, the brick ones wouldn't have been painted. But if they were timber framed or the timber frame section, you get white, you get brown, you get gray, you get blues, but deeper blues and deeper mm -hmm. greens. Yeah. So it's a much more natural, much more starting to swing towards that, bringing nature inside, outside, blending yeah. together. So definitely. All right, so we've talked about the exteriors. Let's talk about the interiors because this was another big change from it was Victorians. was a big change. So one of the biggest changes with, from Victorian to Edwardian is electricity. Yes. So we had electricity by this time. Yep. And so you saw the first electric light bulbs in stored Correct. in houses. And so they did away with the gas lamp. So what that means, though, from an interior architectural thing is that instead of having sconces on the walls yeah. that were gas lamps, basically, mm -hmm. we now for the first time saw Pending lights, light in lights on the like ceiling, yeah. lights put on the ceiling and as opposed to like, obviously, there were chandeliers before that, but you had to have huge ceilings for chandeliers. Uh -huh. And of course, chandeliers were 
candles and sometimes gas lamps, but you know, yeah. massive things to maintain. But now with electricity, it's the first time in architecture that we see ceiling lights. Yeah. That were just not massive chandeliers, but decent, yeah. but on the ceiling, ceiling mounted. So you'd have like the cornices around the The medallions. Lights, the medallions. Mm -hmm. yep. Things like that to give it a more artistic look. Yep. Because they you did know? like their, they did like those things. So they yeah. had ceiling medallions, but that goes along with the fact that they used cornices in their corners, uh -huh. and they have crown molding, um, yeah. which is kind of. I mean, you do see some crown molding for Victorian homes, but it's definite in Edwardian. You've got oh, crown yeah. molding, you've got cornices, um, plaster moldings. Um, you see that on the inside and the outside, yep. decorative plaster moldings, uh -huh. and yeah. So you got the ceiling medallions, but that was with the lighting. But then this is also the first time that we actually see table lamps. And that's why yeah. Tiffany lamp shades were coming out at this time. Yeah, because they mirror image the um, artwork on the windows. You or know, the you doors. Know, all these mm -hmm. uh, lead light windows with the colored glass. And now you could have that as a lampshade right exactly and your lamp wasn't having to be like a gas like here's the thing is that with a gas lamp they smoke yeah and so the smoke would automatically taint whatever was above it and so people didn't really like to use like a stained glass they would use like a flat well, piece of glass very sooty and you right. couldn't use a cloth uh you know shade or anything, shade or anything nope because that would that's why you might that's why basically they had like the globes that yeah. were on them and that spread out the most light uh -huh. but once they had electricity then you were able to have things like actual lamps and that's yeah. why you then started to have like tiffany lamps and things and those beautiful for the wealthy and the people who were building at that time not so much yeah. the wealthy they were just the middle class to upper class had electricity yeah. so we started to see table lamps we started to see ceiling lights and those were different but Another thing that was a big difference in Edwardian is the size of things. Yeah, so they had pretty big rooms. So they would go for larger rooms. Sometimes you'd have a partition door that would split a room. So yes. You, you know, my It'd be one big room. My grandparents lived in a, an Edwardian home in the UK. And so their front room was huge. Um you know, it's probably about 30 foot long. Front room equals living room. Yeah. Carry on. And, but that would be, that would have a large, really big doorway in the middle that mm -hmm. you could open right up so it could become one room. Mm -hmm. Or you could shut it off and just have it so, in your front room and the parlor. So kind of like those patio doors or French yeah. doors that mm -hmm. you would have on the houses. Yeah. You would have them interior as well. Mm -hmm. And this is, again, a little bit before Craftsman. When you get to Craftsman, they just eliminated the doors. Yes. They still had the wide doorways, but not so much the yeah. doors anymore. So Edwardians. And that means, oh, yeah. So like our favorite title company downtown, Capital Title, they're an Edwardian as well. Yeah. I wasn't even thinking about that. And they yeah. have their rooms have. And, and that's the thing. In Edwardian homes, the ceilings are absolutely massive. Yeah, you and have these doors huge, really are really high ceilings, and these doors, almost all of them, go almost all the way to the ceiling. They're absolutely yeah. super tall. So the doors and the doorways and the windows. Yes, the doors and the doorways, though, especially are like if you have eleven, twelve, thirteen foot ceilings, which yeah. gave you this real feeling of space. And then you have a door that goes maybe within two feet of the ceiling. You've yeah. got an 11-foot door or a 10-foot high door, and it would be pocket doors. Yeah. A lot of them are pocket doors or um, barn door style. I mean, mm -hmm. they weren't barn doors, but they were like a barn door style closure um, at the time. So, yeah. yeah. And they're absolutely massive pieces of, of furniture, so to speak, almost, yeah. that close these areas off. So you have that difference, but then... You, also, Edwardian homes had a tendency to be a bit wider. They were built wider. Mm -hmm. Victorians were built very narrow and like going back on the properties. Yeah. But Edwardians were a bit wider. The hallways were wider. People could pass each other in the hallway. Yeah, they like to were... have wide hallways. Yes. Uh, spacious uh, foyers. Actually, foyers. Yeah. a really good example that people might know, Downton Abbey. Yeah. That's a classic. The house for Downton Abbey is a classic Edwardian home. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a more upscale because obviously it was the yeah. gentry. That was but, a mansion, yeah. Yeah, but that's a really good example if 
people have ever seen Downton Abbey, really good example of what mm-hmm. an Edwardian home looks like. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, but absolutely big hallways, big expansive rooms, much wider, bigger windows. Um, some of the casement windows, like we said before. Um, so spacious hallways, high ceilings, and wider rooms. Mm-hmm. The rooms just got a little bit bigger. And it was the first time we saw people start to kind of... Spread a bit. Yeah. yeah. And even the bedrooms. The bedrooms became mm-hmm. a little bit wider. The bedrooms stopped just being a place to sleep. And they yeah. became a place to hang out and to spend mm-hmm. that morning or that leisurely, especially if you were of the gentry you know, class yeah. where, you know, the girls didn't have a whole lot to do other than embroidery and, you know, things like that. They or, did have large bedrooms, um, you know, and yeah. larger rooms all around. Yeah. And the ceiling height also made them feel bigger. Even the ones here, the ones with bay windows, it makes the rooms feel bigger because of the bay window. Mm-hmm. But also the bay window allows that outdoor indoor feel that they were starting to move towards when you got to the Craftsman yeah. and like uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, which we covered a few about well, a couple months ago. We covered the Frank yeah. Lloyd Wright influence here in Racine. Mm-hmm. But the Edwardian was just before that, just before yeah. Frank Lloyd Wright started developing his stuff in the 20s and 30s. And this was like, this would have been, these would have been his modern influences. Edwardian yeah. homes would have been his modern influences. Ironically, the only room that was probably smaller than they are today mm-hmm. is the kitchen. Yes. And bathrooms. And bathrooms. Bathrooms yeah. were very small. Even yeah. though they did have indoor bathrooms in Edwardians, yeah. they were the first of where you were starting to have indoor mm-hmm. bathrooms, but the kitchens were very small. Yeah. Very, very small. So, so absolutely. Yeah. All the other so, rooms were bigger, but... Yeah, we do have quite a few Edwardian homes here in the Racine area. Like I said, the vast majority of them are actually Cream City brick. There's a few. You'll find them on Main Street, Lake Avenue, uh, or Lake Street. Um, You'll find them on College Park, Wisconsin. Um, Those are the main areas. And then, of course, there's some on Wisconsin, North Wisconsin, and North Mm -hmm. Main Street as well. Yeah. So you'll see them in those areas of Racine, if that's what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Go check some out. I'd love to see... Um, but anyway, if you have ever lived in an Edwardian home in the Racine area, do us a favor, drop a comment below. Tell us one thing you loved and maybe one thing you didn't so much love. Because yeah. the problem with having very tall ceilings is it was great for keeping it cool in the summer, but really hard to get them warm in the winter because all that heat was rising and all the way up. Can you imagine climbing up a ladder to change the light bulb? Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's... And those tall ceilings. Absolutely. And that's why mm-hmm. with ceiling lights, you know, they... Yeah. yeah. And of course, their light bulbs didn't last nearly as long. We did that. Mm, yeah. We did that episode. What was that? A month and a half ago yeah, about yeah. light bulbs. No, it was yeah, like a month did. ago. Yeah. So yeah. So go back and look at light bulbs and you'll see. But their light bulbs didn't last nearly as long as our light bulbs do no, now. No, they didn't. Nor did they produce as much light. But hey, electric lights were the thing. So yeah, I mean, when you think about it, that was a new thing. It was. It, it was must the, have been wondrous. Yeah. To not have to you know, find a match to light a candle. Oh, absolutely. Just be able to flip a switch or that's the other thing about Edwardians. Oh, I almost forgot my Edwardian. What I remembered about my Edwardian homes, a lot of their electrical were those push buttons. Yes. Where you push the pop button to turn it on and push the bottom button to shut it off. Yeah. Those push button switches. In out switch. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a push in, push in. Yeah. It's like you push the button in. That was totally (laughs) forgot about that. It's not a switch. Yeah. They're, there's, there are houses that still have those switches. Yeah, they do. Um, so, yeah, so I, to be honest, I love architecture in general, you know, and Edwardians are another one of my favorites. So, yeah, check them out and let us know. So drop a comment below if you have ever lived in an Edwardian home. What did you love? What did you not love? What did you like? You know, um, or it, what do you think about Ed- Edwardian architecture? Do you like yeah. it? Is it your favorite? Um, because everybody seems to have a favorite style of home. Yeah, it's not my favorite. But it's it's a pretty cool kind of home. It is a pretty cool home. Yeah, I yeah. love Craftsman, but the Edwardian has a lot of it has a uh, lot of appeal for sure. Um, effects on that. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. And so don't forget if you like this. Uh, yeah, if you find any edition, value in our content. Yeah, don't forget to click the like, subscribe, and turn that notification bell on. Yeah. So you don't miss any future episodes. Absolutely. And next week, we're actually going to talk about the holiday parade that's coming up. Ooh. Yeah. 
We want to let people know about it ahead of time. Yeah. So that they can plan around and be able to go to it. So yeah. next week is all about the holiday parade. Wow. Yeah. So cool. we're all set. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Ready for November? No? Okay. Well, yeah. That's Yeah? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for cold weather? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyway, thanks for joining us today, guys. And hopefully that helps you out. And thanks for joining us here on Living in Racine. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Bye. Well, Russ, this would be helpful if I had my microphone, wouldn't it? It would. So do you think that might be another blooper? Uh, maybe. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, last week you had a blooper for me. Now you get another one this week. All right, let's try this again.